This is a true story about a mom who gets taken away on the day she has to go to court for her son. She ends up being kept prisoner in a bad man's house in Cleveland, Ohio. Michelle Knight is a 21-year-old mom who likes playing with her son Joey. But she stops their playtime early because she needs to find a job so they can have their own place and not live with her mom anymore. Before she leaves, Michelle asks her mom, Barbara, to take care of Joey. She promises Joey that once she gets a job, she'll get him a special gift. Sadly, when Michelle applies for a job at a laundry place, they say no because she didn't finish high school because she got pregnant young. When she gets back home, she's shocked to see her son playing with a bottle of alcohol while her mom's mean boyfriend is watching him. The boyfriend starts acting inappropriately towards Michelle, and Joey stands up to him bravely. But the man pushes Joey away violently. After that, Michelle decides to ask a social worker for help. But to her surprise, the social worker thinks about taking Joey away from her because they think she can't give him a safe home. Michelle is very upset and begs them not to take her son away. They agree to have a hearing where Michelle can explain her situation and try to keep custody of Joey. A few days later, Michelle visits her friend Emily Castro and tells her that she's staying with her cousin for now. While waiting for the hearing, Michelle is happy because she applied for some jobs and got calls from three potential employers. On August 22, 2002, the day of her hearing, Michelle's mom calls and says she can't drive her to the courthouse. Michelle doesn't have any other choice, so she decides to walk to the courthouse so she won't be late. She has trouble finding the right address, so she goes into a store to ask for directions. Surprisingly, she sees Emily's dad, Ariel Castro, at the store. He understands that Michelle is in a hurry, so he offers to give her a ride to the courthouse. He promises to get her there in 10 minutes. Michelle doesn't really want to go with Ariel, but she agrees because she doesn't want to be late. Before they leave, he says they need to make a quick stop to get a puppy for Joey. He says it will only take a few minutes and that she won't be late for the hearing. At the man's house on Seymour Avenue in the Tremont neighborhood, Michelle goes upstairs with him to see the puppies in the bedroom, as he told her to. Suddenly, he locks the door and holds her tightly, not letting her escape. Once he has control over her, he ties her up with restraints. He does something really mean by taking her wallet and tearing up the only picture she has of Joey. He also puts tape over her mouth to keep her quiet. Then he shows her a gun and threatens to shoot her if she tries to get away. Before leaving, he attaches her ropes to a pulley system and lifts her up, suspending her in the air. Even though she tries to call for help from the window, nobody hears her muffled cries. She stays hanging there for three days, feeling hungry and dirty. Meanwhile, Michelle's mom, Barbara, tells the police that her daughter is missing. She mentions that Michelle has run away before, but this time it feels different because she wouldn't miss an important appointment unless something was wrong. But one of the police officers suggests that Michelle might have run away because she was overwhelmed by the custody case. When the captor comes back, he gives her a hamburger before forcefully taking her to the basement. While he holds her, he says cruel things, making her believe that people think she left her son. That night, Ariel's mother, Lillian Rodriguez, comes to visit him, so Michelle tries to make noise to get attention. But unfortunately, nobody responds or helps her. A little later, the captor comes back to the basement and tightens the ropes, making it even harder for her to move. He even feeds her spaghetti made by his mother to show control over her. After spending time with his friends, the terrible man continues to do horrible things to Michelle in the basement. He reveals a disturbing secret, saying that he hurts others because he was hurt by someone who was supposed to protect him. Hearing this, Michelle understands his pain and tells him not to keep hurting others. She asks him to imagine how he would feel if someone hurt his own daughter, Emily. She pleads with him to break the cycle of harm. Desperate to escape, Michelle promises Ariel that she won't tell anyone about him and will make up a story about an accident to explain her absence. But instead of letting her go, the awful man takes her to the second floor and chains her to the bed. Days later, Ariel hears Michelle singing unexpectedly, so he takes out his guitar and starts playing along. He asks her to write a song just for him. But to his surprise, Michelle tells him she already wrote a song called Concrete. When he reads the lyrics, he realizes they show no respect for him, and this makes him very angry. He stops her from talking by taping her mouth shut. Soon after, Ariel's family comes to visit him. When Emily is about to go upstairs, her dad stops her and says he already cleared out her old room. When Michelle hears the guests downstairs, she tries to make loud noises by banging on the headboard. But the sneaky man tells Emily it's just the dog making the noise. He turns up the stereo to cover the sounds. 
After his family leaves, he hits Michelle. As the days go by, Michelle pretends to have conversations with her son to help her deal with her loneliness. But this annoys her captor, and he slaps her. One day, he brings a box into the room. When Michelle opens it, she finds a puppy inside and feels happy. She promises to take care of it. Then one day, Michelle realizes that Ariel accidentally left her chains unlocked before he went to work as a bus driver. She sees an opportunity and takes the puppy with her as she carefully goes downstairs, trying to escape through the front door. But just as she reaches the front door, the terrible man appears from the shadows and knocks her down, stopping her from escaping. He is very angry and cruelly kills the innocent puppy as her punishment. On April 21, 2003, Ariel does another horrifying thing by kidnapping a teenager named Amanda Berry. Even though Amanda tries bravely to escape, she is not successful. While Michelle is watching TV, she learns that the authorities are looking for Amanda. Suddenly, Ariel brings Amanda upstairs, and Michelle gets to interact with her. But when Michelle realizes that she knows Amanda from art class, Ariel stops them from talking to each other. He chains Amanda in the next room, and Michelle can only helplessly watch his terrible actions. When the man is away, Michelle asks Amanda to work together and make a plan to escape, but the scared teenager hesitates to cooperate. Days later, while the woman is watching TV, the bad man comes into the room and wants to hurt her. But when he sees that she's pregnant because her belly is getting bigger, he brutally hits her to end the pregnancy. After that, Ariel needs Michelle's help for his new job. He disguises her with a wig and sunglasses and takes her outside to do woodworking. When Michelle sees a neighbor, she silently tries to signal for help, hoping the neighbor will understand her distress. That night, she tells Amanda about the neighbor, hoping he called the police. But she gets frustrated when she realizes the sirens she heard were for a fight in another house. Feeling hopeless, Michelle thinks about ending her own life, but the thought of her son stops her. She marks the occasion by putting the number 5 on the wall. Meanwhile, a concerned neighbor goes to the police and reports hearing screams from Ariel's house. But the police don't take it seriously and leave without investigating further. On April 2, 2004, Michelle watches the news and learns about a missing teenager named Gina de Jesus. To her horror, she realizes she is Ariel's latest victim. Soon after, Ariel tells Gina to cut Michelle's hair and reminds them about the alarms on every door and window to prevent escape. Before he leaves, he warns them not to talk to each other. But despite his threats, Michelle secretly talks to Gina and tells her that there are three captives. She suggests that they should work together to outsmart their kidnapper. A little while later, Ariel brings Amanda to join them. In a private moment, Gina tearfully tells Michelle that she trusted Ariel because he was her friend's dad. Michelle tries to comfort her and tells her to stay strong for her loved ones. She reassures Gina that they will find a way to escape because God is watching over them. One year after Gina was kidnapped, her parents Nancy and Felix organize a candlelight vigil with their supporters to keep searching for their daughter. Little do they know, the kidnapper pretends to support them and comforts Nancy. When they go back home, Ariel turns on the TV and proudly shows them the news report about his heartless interaction with Gina's parents. Shortly after, the man takes advantage of the teenager while Michelle bravely tries to protect her. In response, the man cruelly mocks the single mother pointing out that nobody is holding a vigil for her. On the third anniversary of Amanda's disappearance, Michelle and Gina receive the sad news that Amanda's mother has passed away from a heart problem. The loss weighs heavily on Michelle, and she mourns in another room. Days later, the cruel man gathers the captives at the dining table to make a disturbing announcement. He excitedly reveals that Amanda is going to have his baby, fulfilling his desire for a family. When the time comes for Amanda to give birth, Michelle helps with the delivery. However, the newborn baby doesn't start breathing, and the man threatens Michelle with a gun. Michelle performs CPR on the fragile baby until the baby starts crying. Everyone feels relieved after Jocelyn's birth. Ariel then acts like a loving father, capturing precious moments of his daughter's life on camera as she grows up. Despite their difficult situation, the captives do their best to educate Jocelyn through homeschooling. One day, while they are gathered in the living room watching Ariel's favorite TV show, Jocelyn expresses her wish to go outside and play with the captives, whom she considers her aunts. But her father firmly says that the women can't go outside, which confuses Jocelyn. Curious, she asks her father why she can't talk about her aunts with anyone else, unknowingly touching on the secret truth that has been kept from her. Annoyed by his daughter's persistent questions, the man threatens to harm her, but her mother and aunts protect her. 
Later, in a desperate attempt to provide food for his captives, Ariel asks Michelle to help him dig a garden in the backyard. During their conversation, Michelle opens up to her captor, telling him that he doesn't have to keep up his act and can turn himself in for the sake of a better life for Jocelyn. However, the man worries that his real family will find out what he has done if he turns himself in. Undeterred, Michelle argues that God's judgment is more important than anything else. In response, Ariel heartlessly questions where God was when he allowed Michelle to get into his car, challenging her belief in divine intervention. In a surprising moment of vulnerability, the man admits that he never meant to hurt anyone and feels helpless about his actions. Seizing the opportunity, the single mother appeals to his conscience, telling him that God is waiting for him to change his ways. On May 6, 2013, Michelle starts feeling sick, so Gina suggests going to the doctor while disguised if their captor allows it. However, instead of pursuing that option, Michelle chooses to cope with her discomfort by dancing. Meanwhile, Ariel tells Jocelyn that he will go to his mother's house to get food, accidentally leaving the front door unlocked. When the girl notices the unlocked door, she informs her mother, who quickly reacts by waving her hand through the storm door and screaming for help. The attentive neighbors rush to their aid, breaking through the door's bottom panel and allowing them to escape. As soon as the police arrive, they enter the house and rescue Gina and Michelle. Stepping out into the sunlight, Michelle's heart fills with joy as she looks forward to reuniting with her 16-year-old son, Joey. At the hospital, Nurse Carla tends to her, and Michelle eagerly asks about her son, who has been in foster care since her disappearance. Shortly after, FBI agent Jake Solano arrives and brings Michelle a cheeseburger and ice cream, the two foods she has been craving. When the agent kindly offers her a napkin, Michelle reacts defensively due to the distressing memory of Ariel using napkins to silence her. Days later, Carla informs Michelle that her mother wants to see her, but she discreetly instructs the nurse to turn her away. Michelle reveals that during her captivity, Ariel repeatedly told her that nobody cared for her and claimed that her mother had moved to Florida. This implies that her mother had stopped searching for her, and Michelle is not ready to forgive her yet. Once Michelle receives her new glasses, she catches a glimpse of Ariel's arraignment on television. Upon leaving the hospital, Agent Solano takes her to a luxurious residence where she has a spacious queen-size bed just for herself. The next day, Michelle meets with Gina, who reveals that she has spoken with her parents. In her desire for a normal life, Gina mentions that she might need a break from seeing Michelle frequently as they say goodbye, expressing their deep affection for each other. Later that day, Solano visits Michelle and delivers the news that Joey's adoptive parents have decided it would be best for him not to have contact with her because it could cause him emotional distress. However, Solano suggests the possibility of meeting with a family lawyer, who can cancel the adoption because Michelle was never involved in the decision. After thinking it over, Michelle decides not to disrupt Joey's happy life, prioritizing his well-being above all else. During Ariel's trial, he is sentenced to life in prison, and Michelle delivers a heartfelt speech about survival. As the three women start rebuilding their lives, Gina enjoys a lively family gathering with her loved ones. Meanwhile, Amanda and Jocelyn have a carefree day full of laughter and fun at a park. In a powerful moment, Michelle witnesses the demolition of Castro's house, symbolizing her freedom as she observes this significant event. Solano presents Michelle with a photograph of Joey, and she gratefully hugs him. Shortly after, Michelle and the gathered crowd release yellow balloons, watching them soar into the sky in honor of the missing. A month into his sentence, Ariel takes his own life in his jail cell, marking the end of his life. Meanwhile, Michelle turns her incredible journey into a powerful memoir and becomes an internationally renowned best-selling author. She is currently pursuing a culinary career in Cleveland, where she finds solace and expresses her creativity through singing and drawing. Thank you for watching our recap. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.